Lord, our desire is that uh, first and foremost you would be glorified today, Lord, that you would be honored. And uh, Lord, we, so we invite you, Holy Spirit, to be here with us. We uh, pray, Lord, that you would give us revelation knowledge. Um, Lord, we uh, pray that you would, uh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you first and foremost that you are going to give us revelation knowledge. We thank you, Father, that you are going to show us um, things that you have not shown us in the past, Lord. Um, we're ready for them today, Lord. So I pray, Father, Holy Spirit, um, grant us, Lord, godly wisdom, godly discernment, godly understanding, that we would see all that you have for us today. We proclaim loudly, Lord, that which is in our heart, that Satan has been defeated, that we have been redeemed, and that Jesus Christ is Lord. Satan has been defeated. Death has been defeated for us. We have been redeemed, and Jesus Christ is Lord. Period. That's it, Lord. End of sentence. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen, amen and Amen. So, family... Uh, I turn, please, in your Bibles to the book of Revelation, chapter 3. The book of Revelation, chapter 3. The book of Revelation, chapter 3. We are going to pick up in verse 14. Um, but before we do, I want to read something to you from another portion of Scripture. Um, Revelation, chapter 3. Say amen when you're there. Amen? We're there? Beautiful. <clears throat> I want to read to you, as you're there in Revelation 14, if you, even if you're not there yet, get there, because I want to read to you what the book of John says in chapter 15. Chapter 15, verse 16. You don't need to turn there. You can just listen, but those of you that are serious Bible students, you can write that down so that you can look it up later. John chapter 15, verse 16. This is what Jesus says. You did not choose me, but I chose you. So did we choose Jesus? No, we did it as a result of Him choosing us. Say amen if you're with me. Right? He chose you first, and that's what prompted you to choose Him. For if He would have not have chosen us, we would have zero power, zero interest, zero um, inkling to choose Him. Period. And He reminds us of that so that we would understand exactly where we stand. So... John chapter 15, verse 16, You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. So what's the purpose of our salvation? What's the purpose of Him choosing us? That we would go and bear what? Fruit. fruit. Amen. That we would be productive, if you will, for the kingdom of heaven. Important for us to know that. And He says, not only did I appoint you, I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, but that your fruit should remain. And I like that because it's not just go do one thing today and then, hey, it's all over. No, I want you to walk in a, matter, in a manner where your fruit remains, where, where you look to the tree. Listen, a, a while back, my dad, my earthly dad, because you know you have a heavenly father and you have an earthly dad, right? Say amen if you're with me. Amen. Okay, so my earthly dad, he used to have this incredibly beautiful tree in front of his house. It was a leafy tree. The leaves, right? Man, and that thing would used to be so fruitful. Literally for like 11 years, that thing would burst out where you would get like buckets. People would come and knock on the house and say, can I have some? $10 for two, right? No, this is how, much, this is how fruitful that tree was. And then I don't know what happened, but it decided... No more bearing of fruit. Wow. Yes, like boom, it just stopped. The following year, it just decided not to bear fruit. And we were like, man, what's up? So then um, what you do, and I'm not a, I believe the word is, and please forgive me, because a scholar I'm not, an horticulturist, culturist, did I say that word correctly? Thank you very much. Because she's one, so she knows. Yeah, it's those people that know about plants. So what they tell you to do is to injure the tree, as in like cut it, you know, like injure it. Let it, let it think, we're talking as if it was a human, but it's not. Um, who knows? Well, we know it's not. Stick with me though, like do they have something different? Like did the Lord, okay, let me not get into any kooky doctrine, 
But sometimes I think, sometimes when the trees are blooming, I wonder, Lord, are they worshiping you? Does that make any sense to you? <laughs> I know you think I'm nuts now, but it's okay. I often think sometimes when I see that, like that, that all of a sudden, you know, the, that, 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 that the flower explodes, I wonder, Lord, could it be that in my very limited look and, and, and aspect and, and concept of things, wow, look how pretty the flower is, but yet that flower is exploding because it's praising you. Say amen if you're with me, family. You got that? Yeah? Okay, yeah. Now you know I'm certifiedly nuts. Hold that thought. Write it down. Talk to me. Uh, here's another one. <laughs> here's where you're really going to, yeah, this is it. This is it. This is where you leave forever, okay? Um, I'll go outside. I was outside last night. It was a beautiful night. I was looking up, and the stars, they, you know, they pulsate, right? I wonder, and we'll find out if those, if those stars are, are really, they're pulsating, but in, in, in fact, I would suggest to you that I think they're worshiping the Lord. I think they're, they're singing to the Lord in whatever way they do. Are you going to be back next week? Yes? <laughs> Please raise your hand if you're going to be back next week. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, just a crazy theory of mine because as you read Ephesians, you're going to see that everything is by Him and for Him. Everything. You know what everything means in the Greek? Everything. everything. So everything is by Him and for Him. Lord, so these, these roses are for you? Indeed, they're by me and they're for me. But I'm giving them to my wife for Valentine. Oh, you can do that, but they're by me and for me. Say amen if you're with me, family. Yes? Okay, so let's get back to this. So in John 15, 16, he says, look. Oh, so hey, here we go. Real quickly. Forgive me. And so this tree, it stopped bearing fruit. And so this tree that was once super productive, all of a sudden, man, it just went, think, I'm done. I'm not bearing any more fruit. But Jesus tells us, listen, you didn't, I didn't, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. And I chose you so that you would bear fruit. And that your fruit, listen, would what? Remain. In other words, I don't want you living on past glory. I don't want you living on the fact that, you know, two years ago you were so in love with me and you served. And, no, no. I want your fruit to remain. And so that's important. And I share that with you as a springboard to us jumping in to his letter to the angel, to the pastor at the church of Laodicea. So before we do, let me remind you, John 15, 16, you did not choose me, Jesus says, but I chose you. And I chose you so that you would bear, listen, much fruit and so that, and that your fruit would, tell me, remain. remain. Say amen if you're with me. Let's go over it together. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start the sentence, and you're going to finish it. Or you're going to finish the word that I'm going to leave out. You did not choose me, but I chose you. that you would bear much fruit. and that your fruit would remain. remain. Amen, family? Amen. Now, there's a little more there to it at the end of that verse. Um, but, and, and I challenge you to read it on your own. John 15, 16, another good verse to remember. Okay, so, again, you're there in Revelation chapter 3. We finish today if you will, with the church age. You'll see next week, if the Lord allows, that um, we will jump into a, a portion of Scripture from Revelation 4, 4 to Revelation 21 that where the church is never mentioned again. The word church is never mentioned again. Um... Yes, there will be believers, but what we see and what we know as church, Romans through Philemon, Romans through Philemon, doesn't exist anymore. The gathering like this, it doesn't exist anymore. Now, there might be pockets here and there during that time, but the church age, what we know as the church age, it doesn't exist anymore. So today we finish up with the last book or the last letter written to the angel of the church of Laodicea. So it's an important time, and I would say to you that that system of church is still around today. It exists today. It exists right now. Say amen if you're with me, family. Let me give you some background on the church of Laodicea. 
this, this city specifically, Laodicea, it was a very rich, rich city. Financially, um, with resources, it was absolutely rich. Um, there, they had many, many, um, sort of like the United States, right? We're a rich country. Would you agree with that? We have need of nothing, man. We have everything here. As a matter of fact, if, if the whole world cut itself, shut itself uh, off from us, we would still be able to function. We have oil reserves for thousands of years. We just use everybody else's. <laughs> um, we have food reserves. We ha Listen, we need nothing, sort of like this country. This was Laodicea. And very specifically, listen, at that time, they were very well known. They were a, 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 um, a medical hub for the rest of the world, the rest of the known world at that time. They, were very, they, they, were, they had a lot of things going on from a medical standpoint. But specifically, listen, they were very well known for this eye salve. Say amen if you're with me. Say amen if you're with me. Okay, so they, had, they were very well known for this eye salve that would cure many issues. Probably, I would think, probably something like pink eye or, or, you know, those little eye things that we might get, specifically pink eye, I guess. And there was more stuff, but they were very well known for this eye salve. They were very well known also for a hearing salve that they had come up with. And listen, they were very well known for a very specific black wool that was, um, well, exported all over the, the known world at that time. And it brought in a lot of income. Say amen if you're with me, family. Okay, so this was a rich, rich city. As a matter of fact, and I don't know the date because really I don't get too involved with like, you know, history specifics. I don't care less. This is what I want to waste, spend my time with. Say amen if you're with me, right? So I couldn't give you the date specifically. You can certainly look it up. They suffered a massive earthquake there in Laodicea and they needed no help from anybody. In other words, they had the resources financially to rebuild that whole city within, I don't know, months that whole city was up and running again. Usually at that time, if some, some city would uh, suffer something like that, they would need the help of the other providences because, you know, nobody had what they had. Man, they rebuilt that thing in two seconds because they had the resources. Super, super, super wealthy city. N need of nothing, so they thought. Let me tell you something else about the city of Laodicea as it comes to mind. The one deficiency that they had, uh, physically speaking, because they had many deficiencies spiritually, the one deficiency that they had, physically speaking, is that they had a shortage of water. What did they have a shortage of? Water. Of water. Okay, and so they had to have their water um, brought in. And because they were so rich, they... Listen, they had this system of aqueducts where the water came in. This made them very susceptible to um, any type of attack because all that the other army had to do would be what? Surround the city and they had no what? Water. water. <laughs> so they were very, um, they compromised a lot when, when, with certain issues and they were very lenient because you know, we don't want anything happening. Uh, so they were kind of like in that note. So listen, this is what they had. They had water coming in from two very, very um, big cities. They had cold water, or what started out as cold water, from the city of Colossae. Can you say Colossae? That's a kooky word, but yeah, that's it. That's the book of Colossians. So they had water brought in, not shipped in, just it came on an aqueduct from the city of Colossae. And the springs there were very cold. So the water would start out cold. And then they had water coming in from another portion of, of a, a, to the other portion of the city from a city called Hierapolis. I'm going to challenge you with that. Say it. Can you say Hierapolis? Hierapolis. There you go. Excellent. I love it. For you Spanish speakers, Hierapolis, right? <laughs> just kidding. Anyway, so... The, because of the fact that they had zero water inside the actual city, and it was a very dry, arid land anyways, it wasn't like they could depend on so much rain, they had to have water brought in. So they had brought water brought in from Colossae, and they had water brought in from Hierapolis. Here's the kooky thing about it, though. The water from um, Colossae were, were cold springs. So the water would start out cold. 
the water from Hierapolis were warm springs. So the water would start out warm. Say amen if you're with me, right? So, but by the time it would get to them, the water was neither cold nor hot. It was, listen, lukewarm. Can you say lukewarm? So the water, when it would get to them, would get, would be lukewarm. Good, bad, I don't know. You decide. But the point is that it started out cold over here. It started out hot over here. But it didn't matter. The minute it got to them, it was lukewarm. It was neither cold nor hot. Cold water refreshes, you know. Cold water soothes, you know. Hot water heals to some extent. Say amen if you're with me, right? You can put it on a hot, uh, hot water, you can put it on a hot towel, you can put it over your aching shoulder. Hot water, you can mix some tea and you can drink it. So cold water, it soothes, to some extent it heals. Hot water, to some extent it, um, it heals. Thank you. The cold water refreshes. But it didn't matter because at that point, the water was, tell me again, lukewarm. That's important. And I'm going to tell you why. Got your Bibles there? So now you got, you, got, you got a good idea of what we're talking about here with the church of Laodicea. I remind you also that as, as Jesus speaks and as he introduces himself to that pastor, to that church, he always speaks as, as, he, as he identifies himself, we can see that it's always what that church needs. So as he introduces himself, he introduces himself and as you see how he identifies himself, we can see the deficiency of that church, the deficiency of those people. Say amen if you're with me, right? You got that? Sort of like you say hello to me. I know this is kooky, but just stick with me. But we're going to see it here very clearly. And you say, hi, my name is uh, Pedro Garcia, and I am very strong. I am the strong and mighty one. Well, he might be telling me that because I am the... Weak and beggarly one. You got that? Did you see that? Okay, so keep that in mind because it's important as we pick this up. Got your Bibles here? Let's pick up verse 14. Listen to what he says. And to the angel of the church of the, of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Your attention, please. Remember? He identifies himself into the seven churches, um, showing who he is, and at the same time showing what their deficiency is. Listen to what he says to them once again. At the end of verse 14. These things says, says the amen. You can circle, you can underline that word amen close by, right? Um, so be it. So be it. Right? When we, when we pray and, and when we declare after the prayer, we always pray in Jesus' name because that's what he said. He said, from here on in, you pray in my name. Who do, what, whose name do we pray in? Jesus. Jesus. He, he made that, by the way. He said that. We're going to read that in the book of John in Wednesday nights as we go through it. He said, you pray now in my name. That we, this wasn't some cool little thing that we picked up. No, he said, you pray in my name now. And so we pray in his name. And then when we ratify that prayer by saying what? The word, amen. amen. So be it. So he says, hey, the one who's speaking to you is the one. Notice how he identifies himself. The faithful and true witness. See, he lets them know because the church of Laodicea, I remind you that these people are saved. There's no controversy there whether they're going to heaven or not. But they were not faithful and they certainly weren't true. They were unfaithful and they were not true. Despite the fact that they were saved. Do you know anybody like that? Look in the mirror. Because <laughs> you and I have been there at some point. We've been that. Unfaithful and not true. Oh, but I'm saved. I know. So am I. But I've been unfaithful and not true. And he speaks to them. Listen, the one who speaks to you is the faithful one and the true one. The true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. Listen to verse 15. I know your works, he says. I know what you're all about. That you are neither. Oh, here we go cold nor hot I could wish that you were cold or hot so he says to them look you are church of Laodicea walking in a spirit of lukewarmness you're neither cold 
and you're not hot. You're not refreshing. You're not healing. You're not anything. You're just lukewarm. Notice what it says. Stick with me here. Verse 15, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then, verse 16, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. <laughs> your attention, please. I don't want you to get confused here. Please don't. Please don't. But I want you to get the idea. He's not revoking his salvation. That can't happen. Amen? If you are truly saved, then you are truly saved. You've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of God, the book of Colossians tells us. And that's not something that he revokes. If you are, then you are. And if you're not, well, then you're not. But the most important thing for us is that we are, and so therefore we, what? Are. Amen? It can't be taken away from us. So he, he's not speaking about um, salvation. He's making the very, very clear indication, listen, you have lost your usefulness to me. You remember John chapter 15, 16? You did not choose me, but I chose you, that you would go and bear much, bear much, and that your fruit should, and that your fruit should remain. So that's what he's telling them. He's saying, listen, you didn't choose me. I chose you. In the process, you're not going to face the judgment that the whole world is going to face. You're not going to face eternal damnation. But let's be clear about something. I chose you so that you would bear fruit, much fruit, and that your fruit should remain. And here he's telling the church of Laodicea, listen, you're neither cold nor hot, man. Cold water it's good for something. Hot water is good for something. Lukewarm water is good for practically nothing. And you get the picture, right? You've taken a drink of water. Maybe not the women so much, but I know the men. Or maybe some of you trucker girls have done this. You, know, you take a sip and it's like... Pfft. Any of you trucker girls have done that? No, don't raise your hand. <laughs> don't raise your hand. <laughs> How do I know? Um, but, you know, as guys, we've all done that. And so what he's making the point is, man, he's going to grab a cup of water or you are, and this is going to be nice and cold, and it's not. What's our tendency? We want to, it's no good. Or we want the hot coffee, and we get it, and maybe it's been sitting there for a while, and it's now lukewarm, and it's what? Yeah, right? Say amen if you're with me. You want to just toss it out. And this is the implication that he's saying. This is the implication that, that he's giving them. Look, you're neither cold nor hot. Remember that it's not about, um, it's not, it's about being useful for the kingdom. It's about bearing much fruit and, and having that fruit remain. And he's saying to them, you're useless in a sense. You're neither cold nor hot. Because you're lukewarm, then I'm going to spit you. And he says a very, very strong word there. Even in the Greek, even in the Hebrew, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. And again, it's not about salvation. The implication is, dude, you are zero, ze you have zero relevance when it comes to the kingdom of God. Let me tell you one of my prayers. One of the things that I always pray, and it's funny because I, I, it, this, this seems to stir from my soul, from my spirit, when I'm closest to Him. Did you get that? Yes. Say amen if you're with me. Yes. Right? And you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we're very close. Sometimes we're a little distant. It happens. This, this prayer seems to bubble, if you will, when I'm closest to Him. And this is what it is. Lord, I want to be relevant for Your kingdom. I want to be a factor for Your kingdom. Say amen if you're with me, family. Amen. That's my prayer. When I'm walking, you know, uh, when I'm a little distracted, that's not what my prayer is at all. But when, when I'm completely focused, which is happening more and more, <laughs> thank God, um, my prayer is, Lord, I want to be a relevant for your kingdom. I want to be a factor for your kingdom, Lord. I guess you could possibly say that I would like to be either hot or cold. Amen? Whatever the situation calls for, because sometimes the situation calls for cold, sometimes the situation calls for hot. Right? 
Because we can look at it in the physical, but he's not talking about the physical. He's talking about the spiritual. So it all depends on what the situation calls for. Sometimes the situation calls for healing words. Sometimes the situation calls for refreshing words. Cold, hot. Listen, fill in the blank. Even now, your mind is being flooded with illustrations of cold and hot. In the spiritual. Amen? Not in the physical. In the spiritual. We know that sometimes we need a cold cup of water or a cold something cold, and we know that sometimes we, we yearn and want something hot. I don't like my coffee cold. Some people do. I don't. I don't like my water uh, hot. Right? I don't. I like it cold. I just do. Either way, you can be wherever you want on that, but the point is that sometimes you want cold and sometimes you want hot. But let's again bring it to the spiritual. My prayer is, Lord, I want to be relevant for your kingdom, Lord. I want to be a factor. I want to, I want to be relevant. I, I want to matter when it comes to your kingdom, Lord. I want to be cold or hot, whatever the situation calls for. And listen, before you shoot off and think, well, yeah, you're the pastor. No, no, no. I'm talking about when I'm dealing with my wife. I'm talking about when I'm dealing with my kids. I'm talking about when I'm dealing with whomever. I want to be relevant for the kingdom of God. I want to be either cold or hot. What I don't want to be is useless and be lukewarm. And have the Lord in his mind, in his heart, say, you're neither one, so I would just, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. It's going to be water on the floor. It never went in and soothed. It never went in and healed. It just gets, gets puked back on the floor. Say amen if you're with me, family. Amen. So please keep that in mind that the goal is, if you will, again, he's already speaking to believers. It's not about salvation. He's speaking to be relevant when it comes to the kingdom of God. To be either cold or hot. And this is what he tells them. Hey, church at Laodicea, you're neither cold nor you're hot. And they knew exactly what they would be talking about. When that pastor stood up and read that letter to the church, they knew exactly what he was talking about. You remember that city, they depended on water coming in. Water from Colossae, water from Hierapolis. Hot water came from this side because it was hot springs. Cold water came from this side because it was cold springs. But either way, it got to them lukewarm. And they had no ability to make it cold. I think they had the ability to make it hot, of course. But they knew exactly what he was talking about or the illustration. When, when that pastor read, they were like, I get it. We get lukewarm water here. Got your Bibles there? Let's continue. Let's read verse 15 again. I know your works, he says. You're neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Here we go, verse 17. Because you say, I am rich. Were they rich? Yes. Were they rich? Yes. In the physical, right? Because that's how these people function. That's how you and I function. Unless we make the concerted effort to think in the spiritual, we will always defer to the physical. So he's telling them, look, in the physical, this is what you say. I am rich. I have become wealthy. And I have need of nothing. And he tells them, but you don't know that you are wretched. You're miserable. You're poor. You're blind. And you're naked. <laughs> Encouraging words, huh? <laughs> Lord, how do you see me? How do I see you? Well, let me see. You're wretched, you're miserable, you're poor, you're blind, and you're naked. What? Again, in the spiritual. In the spiritual. So he tells them very clearly, look, man, you have a confused concept of yourself. You think you're doing great. You're not putting your dependence on me. You're putting your dependence on the physical because you know you're rich. You don't, you're not in need of anything. But you don't know that at the end of the day, from a spiritual standpoint, you're naked, man. You're poor, you're miserable, you're blind, you're wretched, and you're naked. Remember, they, they, remember, remember? They, um, they had the eyes off. They had the black wool that clothed the, the, whole, the whole, everybody around them. And he says to them, look, you have this black wool. You're a leader when it comes to 
um, Church of Laodicea, Laodiceans, you're a leader when it comes to all the medical aspects, cutting edge. You're a leader when it comes to fine clothing, but wouldn't you know that at the end of the day, you're blind, and listen, you're naked. You're blind and you're naked. You've lost touch. You're focused on things that have no, no eternal value. Notice what he says to them. Strong words. Verse, um, verse 18. Listen to what he says to them. I counsel you to buy, to buy from me gold refined in the fire. That in fact you may be rich. Remember, are we talking about the physical or are we talking about the spiritual? Okay. What are we talking about? The what? The spiritual. La the Laodiceans were dealing in the physical. He tells them, look, I'm dealing in the spiritual. I want to remind you that he says to them, buy from me gold. Your attention, please. Your attention, please. Remember that the believer is going to go through a judgment. Is the believer going to go through a judgment? Yes. Not of your sins. That's been taken care of. Our judgment, it's going to be called, it's going to be the, it's called the Bema Seat of Christ, where you and I will receive our crowns, our rewards, for the deeds done here in the body. Remember that? And he says there, Paul does, he says, there's going to be a fire. I don't think there's going to be a literal fire, family, but there's going to be a fire, and that fire is going to burn. And the wood, the hay, and the stubble, that's going to burn. Your works are going to burn. The, the wood, the hay, and the stubble. But that which is gold, um, silver, and precious stones, that's going to stay. Say amen if you're with me. Right? I don't want to confuse anybody, but you are going to stand in a judgment. The judgment seat of Christ, it's called. Your sins have been done away with. You're not going to receive any finger in your, in your face. You're going to receive love, and you're going to receive rewards. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be there cheering for you. Like, really? I've told you that all messing around, but I'm dead serious. When they call your name, I'm going to be like, yeah, go Will, yeah, go Maria, yeah, go Alex. And I'm going to be sitting there cheering for you because it's going to be a beautiful time where all of us were going to receive our rewards. Some of us will be receive more rewards. Some of us will receive less, but we're all going to receive rewards. And the rewards are going to be, listen, that which we did for the Lord, in the Lord, by the Lord, and that which remains is gold, silver, and precious stones. Everything else will burn away. So what does God say to the Laodicean church? Hey, buy from me what? Gold. In other words, come to me for the works. Because, there's, because at this point, everything is going to burn away, dude. You need to buy some gold, he tells them. You need to buy from me. I counsel you, he says. Buy from me the gold, because I know that the day is going to come where you're going to stand before me and you're going to give an account for that which has been entrusted to you. In this particular case, none of you are in Syria right now with bombs exploding everywhere. You that are males and you have children, right now you're not worried about what your kid's going to eat. You that are ladies and females, you're not worried about what your kid's going to eat. Over there, they are. Listen. I've gotten the privilege. The Lord has given me the privilege. It hasn't been in the last couple of years, but I have traveled all through um, Central America. I've shared this with you before. As a matter of fact, these two brothers have been with me. We've gone on a couple of missions trips together where we've gone to serve at orphanages in Nicaragua. <laughs> Just think about that for a second. Think about an orphanage. And then think about an orphanage in one of those Central American countries. You talk about a pit, you talk about despair, you talk about big bellies, not because they're fat, but because they're starving, but you're not there, and I'm not there. And so I will give an account for that which has been entrusted to me. What has been entrusted to me? Fat Edward Abraham puts his feet up with the air cranking at whatever degree he wants it, and then he goes to the refrigerator whenever he feels like it, and then he, uh, if today I feel like eating steak and the budget calls for it, guess what? I'm going to eat. Take a guess. Steak. And I'm not going to think about it twice. Because after all, I have my credit card. And so do you. And so do you. 
And hey, why don't we get tickets for the Heat game? Sure, let's get tickets for the Heat game. Hey, I need two new tires on my fill in the blank. Get the two new tires. Should I get the warranty for the two new tires? For sure. Get the warranty for the two new tires. I need an oil change also. Get the oil change. I got a credit card. What does it matter? Getting my point? Get my point? Yes. To whom much is given, much will be required. And so, don't get down on that. Don't get down on that. Get happy. Because I'm really like being here, then over there. Get happy about it, but get serious about it. So he tells him, Church at Laodicea, dude, you're neither cold nor hot. You have everything. You think, you, you say I'm rich. You are, physically. You say that you can see everything. You don't need anything. You don't. You have it all. But you're blind. You're wretched. You're miserable. And you're naked. Listen, this is what you need to do, he says to them. I counsel you, buy from me gold. Because that's what's not going to burn away. That's what's not going to burn away. I counsel you, verse 18, that you buy from me gold refined in the fire. Really, Lord, why? So that you may be rich. Physically or spiritually? Spiritual. Amen. Spiritually. And listen, what else should we buy from you, Lord? Buy from me white garments. Remember, they were known for their what wool? Black wool. He says to them, no, 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 understand something. Come to me so that I can give you the white garments. So that in fact you would be clothed because you think you're clothed, but you're naked. He says to them. So that you may be clothed. Notice that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with I solve that you may see. Your attention, please. Remember what they were famous for? I solve. Remember what they were famous for? They, they dressed everybody with their fine wool and specifically that very shiny black wool that people gave everything for. He says to them, look, I got something much greater for you, something eternal. It's something eternal. I want you to be relevant for my kingdom. Because you did not choose me, but I chose you. That you would go and bear much fruit, and that your fruit should remain. So this is the deal. Come to me. Buy from me, he says. Buy from me. Gold refined in the fire, because that's not what's going to burn on that day. When you stand before everybody, and your name is called, and you come forth, and you stand before me, and I crown you with the rewards that I have for you, this is what's going to remain. You're not taking anything from this world over here except that which you have done in me and for me. Because everything is by me and for me. Say amen if you're with me, family. And this is what he's telling them. And this is important because, again, we're done with the church age after this. And he's telling them, listen, pay attention. For it does mean something. This is for real. It's not a game. It's not a joke. My love for you is not flippant. There's a purpose that I have for your life. This is what I want you to buy from me. Notice what he tells them in verse 19 because he spoke to them very strongly. So he says to them, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. So he gives them these very strong words, but he doesn't want them to be discouraged. He reminds them, Because I love you, I have to warn you. Because I love you, I have to tell you what's up. Because those who I love, I chasten. I speak too strongly when they're going off on their own. Say amen if you're with me, family. Like any good parent, right? If I see one of... Not Adrian. If a parent sees a child that is about to run into the middle of the street, what is he going to do? Or say something, right? If he's got access to him, you know... It's not going to be one of these, Pepito, no, 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 cruce la calle, Pepito. Right? I'm not going to scream it, but you can picture it. Pepito, empaca. God, grab him by the hair, right? Say, man, if you're with me, you know. We've all, we've been parents, we know what's up. 
The kid has a, you know, he does something wrong and your first reaction is, dude, I'm going to kill you, bro. And this is what God is doing. It isn't one of these, church of Laodicea, look how cute you guys are. You don't serve me. You're neither hot nor cold. Come on, get on board. No, 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 he doesn't need to play like that. He says, this is dead serious business, man. And half of you don't even know that your life is ending in two weeks. Half of you don't even know that you're not going to make it to fill in the blank there, whatever age you want to. The time is when? Now. Buy from me gold we find in the fire. Buy from me the white garments. Buy from me the eye salve so that, listen, wake up so that you would see. Because the day is coming that you will stand before me. And it's dead serious business. And he reminds him, I'm speaking strong to you. But it's because I love you. It's because I want to deal with the malady that's going on. I'm aggressive with you because I want you cleared from this nonsense. Because you're going to stand before me. It's not a joke to me. It's not a game to me. I'm not playing nice. I'm telling you how it is. Because those that I love, I rebuke. Those that I love, I chasten. In other words, I discipline. Sometimes it's with words. Sometimes I got to let you spill out. But whatever it is, I'm going to do it because that's how important you are to me. Say amen if you're with me, family. So this is what he tells them. Let's go. Verse 19, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. In other words, yeah, get on board. Stop the nonsense. Verse 20, listen to what he tells them. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. So, get the picture. He's speaking to them and he's saying to them, yet even a further um, plead, I'm at the door. You heard what I say. Boom, boom, boom. Come on, man. Let me in. Let me in. Let's, let, let, let's function together. I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone opens the door and lets me in, we'll dine together. Implication, application, we'll be hanging together. And now you're going to be seen. You're going to be clothed. You're going to be um, with the gold. You're going to be functioning with the gold that has been refined by fire. This is what's going to transpire. So I'm knocking on the door. Let me in. Could it be that he's knocking on the door of our hearts within certain areas? I don't know. I know this. I know that our hearts, they contain many compartments. Remember, I'm talking in the spiritual now. Let's, let's do away with the physical. The physical is kindergarten. We're already in college. Amen? We're dealing with the spiritual. I have found this, at least in my heart, and it's, my heart is just like your heart because you're a human being like I am. My heart contains many compartments. And some of those compartments, I've let God has free reign. But some of those compartments, it has some doors that I've like put up and, and, and he's knocking on them sometimes. Can you let me in here? Can, can you let me in this door of your, um, uh, you know, th th this, this door, th this room that contains your, um, your bad temper? I'm just giving you an example because I don't suffer from a bad temper. <laughs> anyway, um, to... to, to can I, can I come into this room, this room of insecurity that you have? Can I come in here? Hey, can I come into this room? Let me clean it up for you. Let, 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 me, let me come in and, and just wipe all this down. As a matter of fact, I'm going to, this particular door, I'm going to take the hinges. I'm going to take the door off the hinges so that I can walk in and out as much as I want to to this particular room. Say amen if you're with me, family. And so, I can't tell you what doors you have closed, possibly. I can't tell you what doors he's knocking on when it comes to you. I know some of the doors that he's knocking on my heart. He just wants to come in and clean that out. You know, again, some doors, man, he's got free reign. He doesn't even need to knock. He just, da, comes in. Some doors he's actually taken off the hinge, and it's just like one big corridor, and he comes in and out. Some places in my heart, <laughs> he still has to come and knock. And sometimes I act like I don't hear. <laughs> you ever done that? 
You're sitting in your house, ding dong, aparte el sol, turn off everything. I know who it is. <laughs> By the way, you're laughing, but we've done this a hundred times because I know who it is. I'm not going to tell you who. Or actually, it's not me. Somebody else does this. They're like, turn off the TV. It's the neighbor two doors down, man. He's driving me bananas. Act like we're not, stay still. You ever done that? How stupid is that, right? I'm just joking with you, but I'm actually like frozen. As if he can see, or, or, or they can see, whoever it is. Huh. And so the Lord says, really, bro? You're acting like I don't see you, huh? You're freezing on the spot, huh? And I see it all, baby. I see it all. For we all stand naked before him. And so I challenge you with that family as we close up shop. Let him speak to you about the, 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 the closed doors that you might have of your heart that he wants to just come and deal with. Just recently, I dealt with a particular um, a little while ago I dealt with a particular pastor curiously enough who had been molested when he was young and by the way just so you know man that we pray for, your, for, our, for our kids you know on Wednesday night specifically that we, our prayer is always for our children either the big ones or the small ones that they would be protected from sexual misconduct we do that all the time that's important to us uh, my bro, I want you to do me a favor. Well, no, Will, I want you to give me the names of the, the young lady and the young man. I mean, we've seen them here a couple of times, but we want to include them. Don't forget, because, you know, we pray for all the kids by names, but obviously I, I don't, but we're going to start including them. Um, and so this guy, man, curiously enough, man, you would hear him teach the word, man, he, you'd be like, wow. Very relevant, very, very relaxed. You'd be like, wow, man, the Lord speaks to this guy. Well, just like I said, we were hanging out and with a couple of other pastors and then later on it was me him and another pastor together and the guy in a time of prayer and a time of talking man he just I think the Lord had been knocking on the door of his heart and he finally that day opened up his heart and man what came out was like intense and a lot of tears and even I think about it now my heart breaks for him and 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 I think that he that day he opened the door of his heart you know to the Lord who had been knocking on that compartment for a long time. Say amen if you're with me, family. And so, man, I know, I know you and I know me that we have those compartments. So let's continue. Let's, let's close up shop. So notice verse 20. <coughs> Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and I will dine with him and he with me, fellowship, communion, walking with the Lord. Verse 21, now he tells them the promise, the eternal promise. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. Wow, that's going to be awesome. As I, as I also overcame, and I also sat down with my father on his throne. Verse 22, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen, family? Amen. Beautiful, man. Would you turn to somebody and say to them, I will overcome. In the name of Jesus. Don't forget that, family, okay? Can we stand, have a point of contact so we can pray as we close up shop today? By the way, funny enough, today, you know, it's a long weekend. I thought, there's going to be nobody there today. But look. All of you, are, well, not all of you, but a lot of you are here. I thought it was just going to be me, Darius, and the Diaz kids. <laughs> yeah, and Anna. Praise the Lord. So, have a point of contact. There with your brother, if anything. Uh, with me, I charge, dog. How much you got in your pocket? <laughs> Find somebody else. Come here, boy. So. Um... The Spirit has just told me, let's make a circle. Yeah. <laughs> I, think we can, I think we can pull it off. Hey, okay, let's sign off. Hey, those of you that are, are watching online, I don't know who it is, man. God bless you. The Lord bless you, keep you, shine His face upon you. See you next week if the Lord allows.